Today, I'm going to answer two questions by two different students. The first one is by Ankit Alok. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And his question is, can you explain why the voltage and current in a capacitor are 90 degrees out of phase without using mathematics? Well, that's my specialty, so I will do that. Now, before I do, I do have a video that explains the charging and discharging of capacitors, and I recommend that you watch that. I'll link it below because that goes into more detail than I'm going to go into here, but I'm going to give a quick explanation about why that happens. So let's take a look at my charged and discharged demonstration circuit. So I have a battery that goes to a switch, to a resistor, to a capacitor, and back to the battery. And I put another switch here to allow me to discharge the capacitor. We're going to make this one volt We'll make this one ohm and make this capacitor one farad. And I do that because this leads us to understand why a particular number comes up. And for any other ado, let's go ahead and, and make that happen. First, I'm going to close this switch just to make sure that capacitor is completely discharged. There's no energy in the capacitor. So now I'll open the switch. Now it's ready to charge. So let's see what happens when I close that switch. At the moment I close that switch, well, what's going to happen is I complete the circuit and I'm going to talk about the electrons for just a moment here. But what happens is a stream of electrons flows out of the negative side of that battery and they hit the capacitor and spread out on the plates of the capacitor. So we get a bunch of electrons flowing here. And those electrons push electrons off the other side of the capacitor. So an electron goes in, an electron comes out. So it appears that current is going right through that capacitor as if it were a short circuit. So at the moment we close this switch, the capacitor looks like a short circuit. I'm going to switch back to conventional current now because most of the industry and academia and I prefer to use conventional current. So conventional current means current flows from positive to negative. It's imaginary, but it works. So current flows into the capacitor and piles up on this plate, shoving current off the other side. It looks like a short circuit. So let's let that continue for one second. So we leave that switch closed for one second, and then we open that switch. So at this point, what do we see? We see that the capacitor has built up some energy. Electricity has flowed on one side and off the other side. Basically, it's built up a bunch of electrons that are trying to push back, but let's go back to conventional current. So I have a charge building up here. It's like air going into a compressed air tank. It's uh, pushing those electrons in. They're trying to push back out, so that causes a pressure. So I get uh, a pushback here, resisting the flow of current into the capacitor. And that pushback is voltage. So with one volt at the source, a one ohm resistor, a one farad capacitor, and we leave that switch closed for one second, we find that if I put a voltmeter across that capacitor at that instant in time, that I would have 0.632 volts across that capacitor. And if we let this continue for a while, it's going to eventually get all the way up to one volt. So our one farad capacitor now has one volt across it. And uh, I can leave this closed till the cows come home because I can't get more than one volt because I have one volt pushing this way, one volt pushing that way. I have no current flowing. And so how much current do I have now? Zero amps of current. So when I first closed that switch, I had one volt one ohm, this looked like a short circuit, so I had one amp of current flowing and no volts. So let's take a close look at that again. So at the moment I flip the switch, this looks like a short circuit, so all I have is one volt, one ohm. Ohm's law says I have one amp of current. And how much voltage do I have here? How much voltage do you get across a short circuit? That's zero ohms. Uh, one amp times zero ohms, a short circuit, equals zero volts. So at the moment I close the switch, this has zero volts across it, and there's one amp going through it. So I have my maximum current and zero volts. Keep that in mind. When I have my maximum current, I have zero volts. Okay, then as time goes by, eventually I'm going to have one volt across here. It takes about five seconds with one farad and one ohm. I'm going to have one volt across there, but now the capacitor is fully charged. No current is flowing through it. So when I have my maximum voltage, I have a current flow of zero amps. So when I had my maximum current, I had zero volts. When I have my maximum voltage, I have zero amps. So 
remember that when I had maximum current, I had zero volts. When I had maximum voltage, I had zero amps of current. So keep that in mind. Now what we're going to do is instead of switching these switches, I'm going to put alternating current across there. So let's just take a look at our resistor and our capacitor. And oh, I'll go ahead, go ahead and put an alternating current source over here. So what's going to happen is we're going to have alternating, well, this voltage goes up and the voltage goes down. So uh, alternating current, voltage goes up, voltage goes down, up and down and up and down. The fact that it reverses polarity, reverses direction of flow is inconsequential. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. So voltage up, voltage down, voltage up, voltage down. That's alternating current. So what's going to happen, we look at the voltage across this capacitor and we're going to see the voltage go up and down and up and down. When we measured the current through the capacitor and the voltage across it, remember when our voltage was at maximum, our current was at zero. So let's redraw this just to make sure that we see it well. There's a nice sine wave. So when our voltage was at maximum, our current, that's going to be our zero point, so we have our maximum positive voltage. What's our current going to be? It's going to be zero. So at the time, this is our time marks, at the time that my voltage is at maximum, my current is zero. But that current is going to go up as the voltage goes down. So eventually that current's going to get up to my maximum. So there's my maximum current. Where's my voltage? At zero. Now, that voltage is going to go down to a negative maximum. If it's pure AC, if it's mixed with DC, it's just going to be a minimum voltage, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. So it gets down to its negative maximum. So that's going to be maximum or our lowest point, whichever it happens to be, but it's as low as it gets. Where's my current going to be? My current's going to drop down to zero. And that current is going to now go negative, meaning simply it goes the opposite direction. So the current's flowing one way. Negative current just simply means it's flowing the opposite direction. So the current's going to reverse direction and reach its maximum. When that current reaches its maximum, where's my voltage? Zero. So whenever my voltage is at maximum, my current is at zero. Whenever my current is at maximum, my voltage is at zero. So they always line up on these peaks. Now what we're going to do is, as we always do, we're going to assign a nomenclature to this such that the time it takes to do one complete cycle, we're going to say that's very closely related to a circle, so we're going to say that that is 360 degrees. So if we do that, that means that this point here where we get our maximum voltage and zero current, that's going to be 90 degrees from our start point, which was at zero degrees. The next time that happens, we get our maximum current and our voltage at zero. That's going to be 90 degrees later, so that's going to be at 180 degrees. The next time that happens, when we get our maximum, this sets maximum voltage or negative maximum voltage, now the current is zero, that's going to be at 270 degrees. And the next time that happens again is going to be at this point here, where we've gone 360 degrees, so we basically started back to the beginning, and so So finally, when that happens again, we've gone full cycle. Basically, we're back to the beginning. We've gone uh, 360 degrees or we're at zero degrees and it starts all over again with our, let's see, this is our current. Current's at our max, voltage is at zero. Here's voltage at zero. And of course, at that time, if I extrapolate backwards, my current was at the negative max. So whenever the voltage is at maximum, our current is at zero. So we have, when it reaches its peak, the other entity is crossing the zero line. When that one reaches its peak, the other entity is crossing the zero line. And so you can see they can't help but line up 90 degrees apart, no matter what the frequency is. So that is why the voltage and the current at the capacitor, a very important point to remember here that we're going to look at in the next question, is the fact that this voltage and current phase is only across the capacitor. So let's look at the current through this circuit. This is a series circuit, so as the current goes up, and the current goes down. Okay, the current goes up. Let's say the current is at um, 100 milliamps. Where is that current 100 milliamps? It's a series circuit. What's the rule? 
In the series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. So everywhere has that 100 milliamps. The capacitor, the resistor, going through the source, as that increases to 200 milliamps, it increases the same everywhere. And that decreases to zero milliamps, it's zero everywhere. Goes down to minus 100 milliamps. Of course, that simply means the current's going the opposite direction. It's the same everywhere because it's a series circuit. Just because we're alternating current doesn't mean that the rules change. So in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. At any moment in time, we freeze time, the current is the same everywhere. But what's happening to the voltage? Let's go back to the charge discharge circuit for just a second. So here's our battery. I'm going to make this a little quick. One volt, one ohm, one farad. Now, what's going to happen here? At one point, we have zero volts here and one volt here. And we have our maximum current of one amp. So where'd this voltage go? Well, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that this voltage plus that voltage must add up to that voltage. So there's my one volt right there. One volt, one ohm gives me one amp. Hey, that works. Okay, now after some time, this voltage is going to climb up to 0.632 volts after one second. So we have 0.632 volts there. Let's get this out of the way. What happened over here? We'll have 0.62 volts here. This voltage plus that voltage must add up to that voltage. So I'm going to have 0.368 volts there. So the voltage is different. Is that okay? Yes, it's a series circuit. What's the rule? The current is the same everywhere, but the voltage is different unless you just happen to get a lucky shot where all the impedances are the same at uh, a particular time. But the voltages will be different, usually in a series circuit. And in the case of AC, they're changing all the time. And so when this finally reaches all the way up to one volt, well, one volt and this voltage must add up to that. So now I have zero volts here. So whatever voltage is not on the capacitor is across the resistor. So if this is a alternating current source, where the voltage is continually going up and down. But any moment in time, the current is always the same. So my current is going up and down and up and down. What happens to the voltage across the resistor? There is no phase shift in the resistor. Current goes up, voltage goes up. Current goes down, voltage goes down. So my current is at 1.0 amps. I have zero volts there. What's the voltage going to be here? It's going to be its maximum, whatever that happens to be. If this goes up to some other higher voltage, let's say it's, a, or some higher current, let's say it's one amp, well, I'm going to have one volt here. What am I going to have here? Some other voltage. So this voltage is going up and down 90 degrees out of phase with the current. This voltage is going up and down in phase with the current. And so that 90 degree phase shift only happens in the capacitor. There is no phase shift anywhere else in the circuit. So current goes up, voltage goes up. Current goes down, voltage goes down. Here, Current goes up, voltage goes down. Current goes down, voltage goes up, such that when my current is at maximum, my voltage is zero. When my current is zero, my voltage is at maximum. So that only happens here, not there. Current and voltage are in phase there. So that leads us to the next question, which is by a student who is using the name of Arcs Production. And his question is on the video on small signal amplifiers. So let's go ahead and draw that amplifier. an NPN transistor, collector resistor, emitter resistor. And if you don't follow this, you may want to watch the video on small signal amplifiers. Make sure you understand what I'm doing here. Coupling capacitor and output. Input coupling capacitor, and we'll put a microphone here. And, okay, so what's happening here, this microphone is an AC current source. Uh, uh, it's sort of like if I take this pin and pretend it's a microphone, there's a diaphragm in there going back and forth as sound waves hit it. As that diaphragm goes away from me, the voltage goes up, or the current goes up, actually. Of course, current and voltage are going to be working together. As that diaphragm comes towards me, the current will go down. So I have a current going up and down and up and down, and of course the voltage is in phase there. And what that does is it goes through the coupling capacitor. I'm not going to talk about details here because I talk about that in the other video. But that current goes into the base and out the emitter of the transistor. As this current goes up, we get 
current into the collector that goes through the collector resistor. So as this current increases, this current increases. As this current decreases, this current dis decreases. And this voltage here, let's say that's plus 10 volts. This is going to be locked at plus 10 volts because there's almost no impedance, very small impedance between this point and the voltage source. And to get a difference in voltage, no matter what the current is, you need some impedance between one place and the other to get a voltage difference. So very small voltage changes here. So that's pretty much locked at 10 volts. We have current going in. Uh, we're always going to have a higher voltage where the conventional current goes in, a lower voltage where the conventional current comes out. We have the voltage going up and down at the microphone. That causes the current to go up and down here. As this current becomes greater, this voltage goes down. So as this voltage goes up, this voltage goes down. As this voltage goes down, this voltage goes up. So I get a 180 degree phase shift between the base of the transistor and the collector. If you're not following me, be sure to watch the video on small signal amplifiers and make sure you understand how these circuits work. Go as far back as you need to in the studies to understand what's going on because I don't want to dwell on this anymore. But as this current becomes greater, this voltage goes lower. So greater current, greater current, lower voltage. This voltage goes up, that voltage goes down. We get a 180 degree phase shift. So what ARC's production is asking, well, wait a second. Why don't we get a 90 degree phase shift in that capacitor, a 180 degree phase shift by the time we get here, and then we have another 90 degree phase shift over here. Shouldn't that be in phase because we have a 360 degree phase shift? Well, the answer to that is what I just told you. That 90 degree phase shift is only across the capacitor. So if I measure the current through the capacitor and the voltage across it, I will find that when the current is at its maximum, the voltage is at zero. When the voltage is at its maximum, the current is at zero. And I get that 90 degree phase shift between the current through the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor. But the current through this whole circuit is going to be in phase. It's a, basically a series circuit. Yes, it does split here, but it comes back together. So like any series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. So I do not get a phase shift here. This voltage goes up, that causes the current to go up, that causes this current to go up. So this current goes up, this current increases, that causes that voltage to go down. And once again, same here, we don't get a 90 degree phase shift because we get Here's our load. Our current goes through there through the load and the 90 degree phase shift is only inside the capacitor. Only if we measure the voltage across the capacitor do we see that phase shift between the current and the voltage. Here, current and voltage are in phase. So we do not get a 90 degree phase shift going through the capacitors. They have no effect on the current because the current is the same everywhere in the series circuit. Series circuit here, series circuit there, Current is in phase everywhere. Current is the same everywhere. These do not cause a phase shift in the current, only in the voltage measured directly across the capacitor. So that's why we don't get a 90 degree phase shift here. Uh, a lot of instructors and textbooks, they talk about capacitors and they say, oh yeah, 90 degree phase shift. And don't fully explain what's going on. So it's very easy to get in your mind that, oh yeah, I'm going to have a 90 degree phase shift going through a capacitor. No, the current does not phase shift. The current is the same everywhere. The phase shift is in the voltage across the capacitor measured directly across it, not in the current going through it. Same thing here. And with an inductor, we have the current and the voltage 90 degrees out of phase too. But once again, that's the current through that inductor and the voltage across it, not elsewhere in the circuit. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.